Hello everyone, I am Manika and today we will learn more about costs. We have already seen in the last module that cost increases as output increases. In order to analyze the pattern of change in costs as output increases, we looked at four different concepts. Total fixed cost, total variable cost, total cost and marginal cost. Now let us learn about some other concepts of cost which help us in understanding the production process and decisions of a firm. A reminder here, we are dealing at the moment with the short run costs, which means that not all factor inputs are variable. Some remain fixed. Let us first talk about average fixed cost. This is the per unit fixed cost of producing a commodity. It is calculated by dividing the total fixed cost by the number of units of commodity produced. For example, if total fixed cost of manufacturing 100 fans is Rs. 7500, then AFC is equal to total cost divided by the number of units produced, which is 7500 divided by 100, which gives us 75 rupees. Average variable cost. Average variable cost is the per unit variable cost of producing a commodity. We calculate it by dividing the total variable cost by the number of units produced. For instance, if the total variable cost of manufacturing 100 fans is 12,500, then AVC is equal to total variable cost divided by the number of units produced. In our example, it is 12,500 by 100, which gives us 125 rupees. Average total cost or average cost? Finally, the average total cost is the name suggests average cost is per unit cost of production of a commodity. We calculate it by dividing the total cost by the number of units produced. Suppose the total cost of producing 100 fans is 20,000 rupees, of which 7,500 is the fixed cost and 12,500 rupees is the variable cost. We know ATC is equal to total cost divided by the number of units produced, which is 20,000 divided by 100, giving us 200 rupees. What can we say about the relationship between average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average cost? Let us try to solve this hypothetical schedule before we answer that. If you remember, total cost is equal to the sum of total fixed cost and total variable cost. And marginal cost is equal to change in total cost divided by delta quantity. Can you see that there is an algebraic relationship between AFC, AVC and ATC? For the first unit of output, the AVC and AFC of 10 and 10 add up to make the ATC of 20. Similarly, for the second unit, AVC of 8.50 and AFC of 5 can be added together to get the ATC of 13.50. Therefore, AC is equal to AFC plus AVC. Now let us also talk about the AVC, AFC and AC curves. The average variable cost curve. As you can see from the figure, AVC is the per unit of total variable cost. That is, it reflects the per unit changes in total variable cost. You can see that AVC curve is a U-shaped curve. This is because of law of variable returns to a factor. As the output increases, the average variable cost decline, come to a minimum and then start to rise. Initially, the increase in variable input lead to an increase in variable cost and total cost. But beyond the point the limitation of not being able to increase the fixed input means the gains that are made by additional variable input start to decline. This results in an increase in the total cost and the total variable cost at an increasing rate. It is this rise in the TC and TVC that the upward moving part of the AVC curve represents. 
the average fixed cost curve. As we can see from the figure, the AFC is a downward sloping curve. Fixed cost is a set cost that we keep dividing by a larger and larger quantity of output. Hence, the AFC falls continuously. The AFC curve is a rectangular hyperbola, which means the area below the AFC curve is constant. It is also an asymptotic curve, that is, it can never touch x-axis. Since AFC can be low, but it can never be zero. Similarly, the AFC curve can never touch the y-axis either. If TFC is a positive value, then while calculating AFC at even zero output, we will divide TFC by zero, which is infinity. Now let us talk about the average cost curve. In the short run, average cost is a U-shaped curve. That is, it falls to a point and then begins to rise. You can also see this in the figure. This is because of law of variable returns to a factor. In the above diagram, the minimum point of AVC is at point B, which is before the minimum point of ATC, that is point A. Let us try to understand the AC curve with the help of the AFC and AVC curves. We know that AC is a sum of AFC and AVC. As the output increases, the difference between ATC and AVC goes on decreasing because the AFC keeps declining. Since TFC remains constant irrespective of the level of output, AFC decreases with the increase in the level of output. As a result, the difference between ATC and AVC decreases with the increase in the level of output. But you see, AFC can never be zero. Even with the increasing output, AC will always lie above AVC. So, we also can see that AVC and AC never intersect. Both AC and AVC are U-shaped curves, but the minimum point of AVC is always before the minimum point of ATC, as ATC also includes the AFC, which declines continuously. So, the decline in ATC far exceeds the decline in AVC. What is the relationship between the averages and the marginal costs? Before discussing the relationship between marginal cost and average cost, we should try and understand how marginal and averages are related together. Let us understand this with an example. Suppose a student scored average marks of 50 in 5 subjects. Now let us say her marks for the 6th subject is 80, which are otherwise more than her average score of 50. When these marks are added to her previous score, the total score of 6 subjects becomes 330 and the average goes up to 55. In another case, if with same average marks of 50, the marks of a student in her 6th subject were 20, which is much lesser than her average marks of 50, then the average marks of the 6 subjects will fall to 45. This implies, for an additional subject, if the marginal score is more than the average score, then it pulls up the average. And if the marginal score is less than the average score, then it pulls down the average. Now let us talk about the relationship between the MC and ATC curves. As you can see in the figure, when average total cost is falling, the marginal cost is less than average total cost. Marginal cost always cuts the average cost curve at its minimum. So the point where MC is equal to ATC is the minimum point of ATC. When average total cost is rising, the marginal cost is always greater than the average total cost. We will now discuss the relationship between the MC and the AVC curves. Both MC and AVC are derived from the total variable cost. Remember, during the short run, fixed costs do not change. It is only variable cost which changes with change in the level of output. Thus, the changes in marginal costs are in fact due to changes in variable costs. As you can see from the graph, when average variable cost is falling, the marginal cost is less than average variable cost. The marginal cost curve cuts the AVC at its minimum point. As AVC begins to increase, the marginal cost curve lies above the average variable cost curve. Now let us look at the long run cost curves. 
we are talking about the long run average cost curve or LRAC. As we have discussed before, in the long run, all inputs are variable. So all costs are variable. The shape of the long run average cost curve reflects the kind of economies of scale that prevail. The LRAC is a U-shaped or dish-shaped curve, depending on the returns to scale experienced by the firm. Also vary as output increases. Intuitively, this may happen when increasing returns to scale are experienced as output expands initially. For example, the firm may be able to use better machines, more automation, etc. This will lead to diminishing costs. As you can see in the figure, up to the level of output Q1, long run average costs decrease, and therefore, the LRAC curve slopes downwards. For example, if you were to increase the factor inputs by two units, the jump in output for this section would be more than two units. Then the firm has economies of scale. As output increases beyond Q1, all the gains from the scale economies are exhausted. Therefore, increasing output further does not lower the average cost. The area between Q1 and Q2 is called minimum efficient scale. This denotes the range of output for which the average costs are minimum for this firm. Notice that average costs are constant in this range, corresponding to constant returns of scale. But once the output goes beyond Q2, the per unit costs start increasing. Therefore, LRAC curve starts sloping upwards. It implies that firm's output increases less than in proportion to the increase in inputs. Perhaps, the firm has become too large to reap any benefits. These increasing costs are the result of diseconomies of scale. Why do diseconomies of scale occur? Diseconomies of scale may be associated with overcrowding, lack of supervision and management, or lack of coordination and planning. In brief, larger size of the firm is responsible for diseconomies of scale and increasing costs. How do costs affect returns to scale? If the industry faces increasing returns to scale for all ranges of output, the LRAC curve may never actually begin to slope upwards. In that case, the LRAC will be a continuously downward sloping curve. In other words, these are industries for which the more they produce, the lower the long run average cost. These are called decreasing cost industries. Similarly, an industry may never experience increasing returns to scale. If it experiences only constant returns to scale, the LRAC curve will be horizontal. Such an industry is called a constant cost industry. Finally, if an industry experiences only decreasing returns to scale, the LRAC will be an upward sloping curve. Such an industry is called an increasing cost industry. To summarize, average fixed cost refers to the per unit fixed cost of production. It is a rectangular hyperbola. Average variable cost refers to the per unit variable cost of production. It is a U-shaped curve due to law of diminishing returns to a factor. Average total cost refers to the per unit total cost of production. And it is sum of average fixed cost an average variable cost for a given output. Similar to the AVC curve, it is a U-shaped curve due to law of diminishing returns to a factor. What is the relationship between AC and MC? When MC is less than AC, AC falls. When MC is equal to AC, AC is constant and at its minimum point. When MC is greater than AC, AC rises. MC increases always at a faster rate compared to AC. Relationship between AVC and MC. When MC is less than AVC, AVC falls. When MC is equal to AVC, AVC is constant and at its minimum. When MC is greater than AVC, AVC rises. 
MC increases at a faster rate as compared to AVC. LRAC can be a downward sloping curve, a horizontal curve or an upward sloping curve depending on whether the firm is reaping economies of scale, constant returns to scale or diseconomies of scale. We conclude our session on costs here. Thank you for listening to us.